You say, well, what, what are those aspects? Well, to put it very simply, the supernatural hand of God should be at work in our life. It should be evident. As opposed to people that are in the world and they live naturally, they think naturally, uh, according to their own thoughts and their own abilities, they depend upon their own strength and their own cunning and, and all of those things. It's a very natural, physical, carnal life. That's what the world is like. They depend on everything they can feel and see. But for a Christian, that's not what our life is supposed to be. See, we live by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. So what does that mean? We live according to an ability and a power that's greater than our own. See, God can do things that we can't do, and when we live according to His grace and His ability, then we become a peculiar people, a unique, special people that's different than everybody else because there's things happening in our lives that don't happen in other people's lives. Amen? We're supposed to be different. And it's a better way. You see, supernatural things, that means I'm not always... Supernatural does not always mean spectacular. It can. Often it does, and that's great. Spectacular meaning fireworks. You know, a big show. Wow! But sometimes it's, it's very small things. But there are things that would not be happening if it were not for God. You know, just having the peace of God in your home. Where, where, you know, all kind of things are going on and you face the same things that everybody else faces. But in your home, there's peace. Now, you see, not everybody lives like that. There's some homes that are not, there's no peace. There hasn't been peace for years. But you see, having peace in your home, regardless of the circumstances and whatever's going on in family and kids and all the stuff, but there's peace in your home, that can be supernatural. That's, sometimes we don't think about that, but that, that is just as supernatural as, as someone being healed by the power of God. We'll take both. Praise the Lord. I, I'm, I'm for both of them. But we've got to realize, there, this should be our daily life should be filled with the supernatural work of God. His hand should be evident. And in order for this to happen, we have, there's a certain attitude we have to have as a believer. And it's very clear if you look in the Word of God. Look, let's start in Luke 18. You see, we have to contend for the supernatural. If we want to see that special, unique, peculiar way of life that God has ordained for us, where our life is set apart and different than the life that's in the world, then there has to be a, a fight for it, a contending for it. Uh, there's, there's words we're going to look at where we're told that we are to fight the good fight of faith. Uh, there's many times we're encouraging the word to stand and having done all to continue to stand to believe, to have a, a persistence, a strength about us. If we really want to see God's work in our life, there, there has to be an action on our behalf. There has to be something in motion in us in order to see these things happen. God is willing and desiring to work in our life. There's no doubt about that. See, God's will is never the question. His will is constant. It's the same for me as it is for you. God desires and wants to do good and great things. But we have to be willing to contend. We have to be willing to believe and to stand and to hold fast in order for those things to happen because we serve a God of faith. And there are certain things God cannot do unless there's faith working in our life. And we're willing to stand and stand against the... You know, there is an enemy. There is a devil. He's defeated. Jesus has taken all authority and power over Him. But He is operating in this earth and doing certain things. And those things cannot be stopped and prevented and held back unless we take a stand. I describe it like this. Have you ever played King of the Mountain? When you were a kid, you know, you heard of the game King of the Mountain. There's a pile of dirt out in the field. Boys usually play it. And so it's called King of the Mountain. And whoever can stand on top of that pile of dirt and keep his place up there, he's King of the Mountain. So all the other boys run up and down and try to push the other one off the top of the dirt pile. And whoever can stay up on top of the dirt pile is king. So it's, it's a simple game. And, and, you know, the more boys there are, and especially if they're related to each other by blood, the, the more rough the game can become. 
because you've got to be king of the mountain. So you push the other one off and throw him off and all kind of things happen. Well, the devil likes to play that game. The earth's the mountain. And he wants to be the king of the mountain. Now Jesus has, has dethroned him. But then Jesus took that power and that authority put it in our hand. And unless we take the place, the devil will just get right back up and take it. If no one's going to stand there, well, he said, I'll do it. And so there are certain things that he wants to do to prevent God's will from happening. And unless we take our place and stand and contend and believe and use our faith, all these things that have been freely given to us, unless we do it and use it, we'll never see the power of God at work. If we just sit at home and twiddle our thumbs and say, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> There's many things that we will never see happen in our life that God wants to do. So we have to learn how to contend for the supernatural. Luke 18, verses 1 through 8, describe this principle. Then He spoke a parable to them saying that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Uh, that's, that's a wonderful truth. Jesus is teaching. He's about to give a, a story, a parable. And the principle is that we should always pray and do not lose heart. Don't get discouraged. There was a certain city, a judge, who did not fear God nor regard men. Now there was a widow in the city and she came to him saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. He would not for a while, but afterward he said with himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard men, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her unless by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge His own elect who cry out day and night to Him, although He bears long with them? I tell you that He will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will He really find faith on the earth? When the Son of Man comes, will He really find faith on the earth? Jesus is telling there is this woman, a widow. No one was there to help her. And, and so she kept going to the judge. Somebody was troubling her. Maybe somebody was trying to take her house or who knows what was going on, but she was having trouble with somebody. And so she kept coming and coming and coming and coming. And finally, this judge, it says he was unjust. So this judge is not God. It is not a picture of God uh, because God is just. Amen. We have a good God. But here, Jesus is giving a picture of a man who was not good, who was lazy and good for nothing, but he had a position of power. And so this woman wouldn't give up. She just kept pestering this man until finally he said, I don't care about this woman. I don't care about God. I don't care about the law. But this woman is, is messing up my quality of life. I keep trying to play my golf games and she keeps messing with me. And so I'm going to do something so I can you know, go back to living the way I want to live. And the principle is this, this widow woman would not give up until she got a result. And so the story for us is we should always pray and don't give up until we get the result. We have to continue in faith. We have to continue to stand, continue to believe, continue to hold on to the promises of God until we get the result that we're expecting and don't give up. So many times people lose the fight of faith not because God wasn't willing. God was, was very much willing and desiring, but they gave up. They quit. In the process of God working to bring to pass the answer to their prayer, they quit. They got weary and gave up. And so everything God was about to bring into their life, it stopped. The whole process froze up because they quit praying. They quit believing. And when we stop praying and stop believing, then the operation of God will stop also. Because God works by faith. He requires that on our behalf. And that's why Jesus says, so when the Son of Man comes, is He going to find any faith? Jesus is interested in faith. He's interested in us believing and holding fast. So the principle is, don't give up. Be persistent. Keep praying. And Jesus gives the example, this woman got a result from an unjust judge. How much more results will you get from a good God? Praise the Lord. You know, if a, if a natural woman, how many of you know some people that are persistent? How many of you could think of, of maybe you know an example of this widow woman? Maybe you know somebody like that. Maybe you are somebody like that. 
I don't know. But you can think of an example of somebody that, man, if they get a hold of something, they'll just they'll they'll just keep after that until they see it change. And so think about that. That's the kind of attitude we have to have in prayer. That's the kind of attitude we have to have as a Christian. That I know this is the will of God. I know this is the Word of God. I know this is what God said to me. And I'm not letting go of it until I see it come to pass. That is what God wants in our lives. That's what we have to have. We have to contend for the supernatural. And not be willing to give up just because we see a negative report. Just because something doesn't happen the way we thought it should happen in the time frame that we set up in our own minds. We should never just give up 